It's Monday the 6th of September 2010 and this is Photo Walkthrough episode number 133, Tutorial 20, Chapter 2. Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. Today we've got Chapter 2 of our brand new tutorial where we're looking at some of the new features in both Lightroom 3 and Photoshop CS5 and seeing how we can combine those features to give our slideshows in Lightroom 3 a little fashion label. It's a really interesting tutorial and we've got some more great tips coming up today. But before we do that, as usual, I'd like to say a massive thank you to our show sponsor and today we're being sponsored by Mosey. Mosey is a great way to get all of your photos, your music, your videos, your family stuff, anything that's important, backed up online securely, safely, and automatically without you having to remember to do it once a month or once a week or whatever it is you do. It costs only 15 cents a day or less if you take one of the longer term plans, and it is a really reliable, secure, encrypted connection up to the Mosey servers, and you can get your files back not only on your own computer, but if you go online, you can get those files back onto another computer as well. It's a fantastic backup mechanism, and if you haven't got your own backup mechanism running already, I definitely encourage you to make sure that Mosey is the way you go ahead and do it. Thank you very much to Mosey for supporting the show. If you're a photo walkthrough viewer, you can get a 15% discount on the Mosey Home package by using the promo code PHOTO. Or if you want to use a Mosey Pro, you can get a 15% discount using the promo code PHOTO15. Thanks very much, Mosey, for supporting the show, and I hope you guys are going to go and get your backup sorted out. Okay, let's jump in and look at today's Chapter 2 of Tutorial 20. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little cutout. I'm going to use uh, the new Refine Edge tool to, to fine it up, but I'm going to start with the uh, Quick Selection tool, which you can get with a W key. Um, and I'm just going to quickly, roughly, draw around the edge of our tab. And you can see it's not quite got the right idea there, so I'm just going to have to point out where it made a mistake. There we go. Just give it some more clues about what's in and what's out. And that's not a bad starting selection. So um, the next thing I want to do, because I want to work on the tab, not the background, you can see I was selecting the background there because it was probably easier for it to get. Um, and, you know, quite often the background is the simple plain bit and the bit you want to cut out is a more complex bit. So it's quite often easier to get the background than it is to get the, the subject selected. So I did, I've done that here. I've selected the background and now I'm going to do Command-Shift-I or Control-Shift-I to invert my selection and you can see that the marching ants have now changed so that they're surrounding the bottom stuff instead of the top stuff and that allows me now to press the refine edge tool and you can see that what we're what we're working on here is the um, the tab not the bit around the tab but it's a pretty rough selection so I'm going to start using the uh, the refine edge tool here there's a there's a, an actual tool here in the refine edge palette the refine radius tool um, which if I draw around the edge of our tab and just tell Photoshop where the edge of my subject is and make sure I get a bit of the subject and a bit of the surrounding area. There we go. And now when I let go you can see that really smartens up that edge. It does a very nice job. You can see we've got some good crinkly bits on the ends there where there's a bit of a bit of tufty ends um, and, and also over here we've got some nice texture around the edge of the selection. We, we can see this on a black background as well by pressing B just to see how it's looking in both a black and a white. So we've got a couple of other views in there. Uh, we could just see the mask if we want to. I can see there's a little bit of stuff I might need to tidy up there. Um, but it, this is this is a really very, very useful tool. Um, there isn't any surrounding colour I need to decontaminate, so I won't bother with that. And I'm going to output to a new layer with a layer mask. So I'm going to press OK on that. And now in my layers palette, I have, as well as my background layer that I started with, I've got my tab layer um, with the, uh, um, the layer mask there that just occludes the, the background. So we've got a fairly nice selection there. I would just like to, if you look here, we've got a few little transparent bits on the side that I'd like to just tidy up. So I'm going to just um, edit the layer mask by alt clicking or option clicking on the mask itself. So if you hold down the alt or option key and click on the mask, you can see the actual mask here in your main edit window. And um, 
I'm just going to zoom in there. And because a layer mask is just a bitmap like any other, it's just a picture, just like the just like the main layer information is just a picture. I'm going to grab the paintbrush and I'm going to paint. I'm going to press D to get black and white here, and I'm going to paint some white on the. I'm going to make my opacity 100%. Just notice that. Um, I'm going to paint some white here on the layer mask, just to tidy up those bits where it, be, it was a little bit transparent inside my tab, and I didn't really want that. So let's just have a quick look around the edge, see how it's looking. It's not looking too bad. I might just also tidy up that little corner there, which I think is probably coming out into the... Yeah, look, we got a little bit of the desk in there as well. So just tidying up my, my layer mask by hand there. Um, and I think I might also... I'm looking at that top edge, and it's looking a little bit wispy, so let's just... Just painting black on the layer mask, just tidy up the mask, make sure we've not got any stuff we don't need in there, and that's not bad. Obviously we could spend longer on this if uh, if we had time, but I'm trying to keep the video as snappy as I can. So, um, we're still working on the layer mask, need to go back to our normal view by option or alt clicking on the mask, and here we are back to our, our normal view. Um, so we've cut it out nicely, um, we've taken the text off, the next step is to put our own text onto this. So I'm going to choose the Type tool, which you can get to by pressing the T key. Sometimes it takes a moment to start, it's doing something with fonts, but uh, um, I don't really care what it's doing, I just want it to go open quicker. Um, and I'm going to click on my image, uh, and I can see I've, I've already got a, a fairly appropriate point size. So I'm going to just type Photo walkthrough. Um, my logo is usually done in Arial um, and I can click outside the text and drag that around while we're still in the type tool and also if I hold down the command key or the control key you get a, a transform box which allows you to transform your text. Um, if you hold down the shift key as well it snaps to the correct proportions. So holding down command first then click and drag and then press shift to, to make this work the way you want. It, little bit confusing that. So hold down command, click and hold, start dragging and then press shift. And that will do what you want it to do. It will do a nice in proportion resize of the text. So having got that approximately where I want, I'm going to just click away from that just to get the, uh, just to set it and fix it. Um, and I'm going to just uh, add a little bit of uh, styling to that layer because what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and make this text sort of sit into the image because at the moment it, you can you can see it's just text over the top of something. Um, and what I'm going to do is just try and make it uh, sit more naturally on top of this and give it a bit of texture and stuff. First of all, I'm going to just do a bevel and emboss. And this is a layer effect. Um, so you can see what it's doing to the text. It's giving it a sort of a, uh, a re raised relief fo uh, feel to it. Um, I'm just going to set my uh, angle here to about 140, something like that. Um, so it looks like the text is coming down from the top left, as though it's shining uh, from top left to bottom right. And so we get, should get shadows in the bottom right. I want to do an outer bevel, so this is going to put a little bit of re relief around the outside of our text, and I'm going to do it nice and small. I don't want too much, I just want a little suggestion of of a little bit of uh, um, shadow around it. Now remember, we're working here at probably about 2,000 pixels wide. When we come to the final image, we're going to be exporting it at 500 pixels wide, or possibly even smaller. Um, which means that we, when we work here, things are going to look larger than we would like them to look. If we want them to be visible when it's been shrunk down, we need to start working and make our, our edits large. So I know it looks a little bit uh, uh, rough here. Um, it doesn't quite look realistic here. When we shrink it down, it's going to be a lot less obvious that we've done a, an emboss here. So. Um, one of the things to get used to, when, you, when you're working large and you're going to shrink it, you really need to paint with a much broader brush to make those edits that you make uh, visible once you shrink it down. So it's a little graphic designer's problem that you're quite often working large and it's going to shrink. So I'm going to uh, leave the rest of the settings alone. I quite like the way that looks there. So I'm going to press OK on that. 
and now I want to put a texture over our text so it appears to be sort of stamped on this on this uh, ribbed pattern at the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our background layer that we've cut out um, and I'm going to duplicate that and I'm just going to drag it up above my text which of course is going to obscure what we've been working on. Now I want to make this a texture layer rather than a, a bitmap layer like this so I'm going to choose image adjustments black and white. Now normally as you know I'm a, I'm a um, uh, a non-destructive edits kind of guy. Um, I would normally do this with a black and white adjustment layer rather than an edit, but uh, we're just going to use this as a texture, so it really doesn't matter so much. Um, so I'm going to just try and dial in a little color mix here that that gives us a nice strong contrast. I'm just going to push all the other colors up, and then I'm going to mess with the red until we get nice strong contrast which is probably about there yeah yeah that's about as good as it's going to get so we'll do that and I'm going to press OK and I'm going to also just do an image adjustments uh, curves just to brighten it up a little because it is looking a bit heavy at the moment so See, I'm just really doing an S curve, but I'm trying to make most of it brighter. Yeah, that's better. So, we've got a texture layer here. Now, in order for that to to apply to the image below and see stuff through, we need to choose a blending mode. But I also only want it to apply just to the text. And we can do that with what's called a clipping path. If you hold down the Option or Alt key and you point at the line between, if you watch my cursor, I'm pointing at the line between the two layers and we get that little uh, black and white intersecting circles graphic. If with the Alt or Option key held down I click there, we get this little arrow that points down to the layer below. What that means is this layer is only going to apply to this one layer, not to any layers below. So without the clipping path, it applies to the whole image. With the clipping path, it only applies inside the area of the one layer below it. So a slightly esoteric thing to understand, but um, occasionally very, very useful. Um, in this case, I'm going to choose a, a blending mode that makes it sort of sit nicely um, into the shape of the text and, and hopefully give the text a bit of uh, a shape too. Um, we need uh, 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 some sort of contrast enhancing. Uh, overlay is not working. Soft light is not working. We should find that pin light does a pretty good job. And that's not bad, but obviously way too strong. So let's just back that right off. It only needs to be a suggestion of texture. It doesn't need to be very strong. So 44% or possibly even lower will do just fine. And again, this may not look terribly realistic at this size, but once we go down and make it much smaller, it's going to look a lot better. Um, so it really does start to look like it's sort of been stamped on and it's a, a slightly raised but, but still slightly textured text. Okay, we're all done again for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back next week with Chapter 3. I'll see you then. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Please help support the show by using our sponsor's promo codes or by passing the promo codes on to your friends. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. photocastnetwork.com